Welcome to the Simply Colorful Fibercast. Today is May 16th, 2014. My name is Lynn Marquadon and I'm your host. How is everyone? How are you all? It's nice to see you. Today we're going to be quilting back here in the Simply Colorful Fibercast studio and we're going to continue to work on that gray quilt. So grab a project, come play with me, come sew. It's amazing what we're going to get done in 60 minutes. So I just hope everyone is doing well. I'm so glad to be back here in the studio. As you know, we've been either preparing to go on the trip to Las Vegas or we were in Las Vegas and then out in Arizona at the Grand Canyon. So filming on the road is always fun, but there are lots of quirks that I know you all experienced, and I apologize for that, that we weren't live. Um, but hopefully you saw that 20 or so minute clip that we did at the Grand Canyon. And I want to assure you I was no nearly as close to the edge as it looks like in the video. So, um, and I would understand if you don't even want to watch the video because it does, it's disconcerting the way the view is. But I just wanted to assure you. Anyway, we're home. It's May. Here in the Northeast, flowers are blooming and the promise of gardens has already begun. So we'll talk all about that. But for right now, let's just get right into the project. And again, I hope you all are quilting or knitting or working on your felting. Sarah, I know you're doing a lot of wool felting these days. Grab it. I know it's a Friday night, but you'll be amazed at what you can get done in 60 minutes. So, since I last saw you here in the studio, I have finished the squares for our gray background quilt. And two times ago we started to do the border that had the chartreuse wonky edge like that. Now actually as I look at it on the screen it looks kind of pretty but I have to tell you that I thought I was going to have a big problem lining up the squares that it was going to look a little bit misshapen because I didn't want to go through the bother frankly of working out the math so that all of the lines would line up and then we would have the half squares here going up and down having to work those. So I actually changed course a little bit and thought and I bought a piece of this green that I thought that I would literally applique on top of just a set of these gray squares. So that's what I'm in the process of doing is making sets of three by six squares that will go on the edge of each of the big outer blocks. So that's my current plan and then I will come back and I will overlay the green and applique the wonkiness on it. I think that will look good. And this I'll use on the back of the quilt. It's still useful and it's still pretty and I think that'll be fun. It'll add some dimension. So just wanted you to know I'd made some progress on that and I have webbed a lot of these grays together so this will go very nice and quickly. And I am back to wearing my contacts and then my reading glasses just for a change. And again, happy Friday. I hope everyone's doing well out there. I just cleaned my machine, I oiled it, I put a fresh bobbin in. Now this is interesting, I think I'll do multiples at once so that we don't have, that, have to waste any thread. It's amazing how long the Aurifil bobbin thread lasts, don't you think? I hope you can see me okay tonight. There are lights everywhere in the studio. I missed that part. You'd think I'd been gone for a month. It was only two weeks, really. 
or 10, maybe not even 10 days, but for those of you who travel, and it seems to be, well, I don't know if it's an age thing, but there's a lot of work leading up to travel. Then, of course, when you get home, there's work that's piled up. And so, all good. We had beautiful weather out west. And for those of you on the, on the line now who either live out there or have friends who live out there or have visited, I, you live in a beautiful part of the country. Just gorgeous. So why don't I tell you a little bit about where we went and what we did. And I won't, it won't take too long, really. So we flew out, and I didn't want to tell everyone before we left, frankly, just for security reasons. I don't know. But the day after we made the hitty bed here, so two Friday nights ago, Bob and I got on a plane to Las Vegas. And I had to work there, and this was his first trip ever. So we were able to stay in the Palazzo, which is a nice hotel next to the Venetian, down the street from Caesar's Palace and the Bellagio. Karen, if you're out there, and, and Judy, you probably remember those locations very well, right next to the Wynn. And so for from Saturday and Sunday, he and I were able to explore using the bus the Deuce bus in Las Vegas. I'm sure those of you who have been out there know that. What a bargain. We went down to old Las Vegas and saw the Golden Nugget and the older casinos and that was really quite fun what they've done on Fremont Street there. And then started work on Sunday. Bob continued to explore the city through midweek and then we saw a concert Wednesday night, the Imagine Dragons. I think they're an up-and-coming band. They weren't quite my style of music, but, you know, it was wonderful to see live entertainment. It's, uh, and, and all of the light show that they do, and the, now they had the big screens. This was at the Sands Convention Center, which is in between the Venetian and the Palazzo, and it's just a big, big convention center that they've set up like a concert venue. And they had food and drink and you go in there and there's light show everywhere and of course the the musicians and they have all sorts of drums and just just a spectacle it was great anyway so then on Thursday we finished up and we headed up to the Grand Canyon and we rented an SUV so we were high up off the ground which I love to drive in and we just drove out to the desert and what fun. We went to the Hoover Dam and then we headed to Williams and we stayed in Williams that night at a Best Western there and then we went up to the Grand Canyon on Friday morning to the South Rim and we did a lot of walking that day. Stayed up there in, uh, oh I can't re and we, we found out how to say it, Tucson, T-U-S a Y A N, Tucson, I think is how you pronounce it. It's the, it's the town right outside of the gate of the Grand Canyon before you go in on the South Rim. So we stayed there, and we then we stayed the next, and then you know, we had the broadcasting issues that Friday night, and what a hoot! You should have seen us about an hour before supposedly going live the internet was so spotty. In some places we would we'd have our phone, you know, Bob and I, and Bob was a trooper. He really was helping me find the right spot and, and of course he held the iPad there and filmed. We would run we were running back and forth up and down the rim. Oh I've got two bars, I've got three bars, oh I'm down to one bar. It at one point I thought for sure we could broadcast because we were getting three bars. At one point, I was able to text Karen. I don't know how that went through. It was so spotty. 
Um, so she was able to send out a note, and I hoped that that um, it didn't goof up your plans for Friday night. Um, but I, I felt really bad. So anyway, we filmed it there, as you saw, for half an hour, the sock, knitting the sock. And then the next day, we decided to stay in the canyon again because it, we, we were having so much fun. And we explored some other rim trails, and we even walked down into the canyon. And I know I'm going on about this, but it's just, for anyone who has never been to the Grand Canyon, it's worth the experience. And believe me, we did not walk down that far. I wanted to go the one and a half miles down to that, the first house where they have at least a bathroom and water. But, probably rightly so, we only probably walked down about half a mile and then walked back up. And that was, believe me, that was plenty of exercise. And um, for those of us who do a lot of sitting in my job, that was probably plenty, but highly recommend it. So then the next day, we drove down to Sedona and to see the Red Rocks. And that was fun, too. They were spires just climbing into the air, unlike I've ever seen before in my life, and so red. And we took back roads through and took lots of pictures. And then we flew home on the red eye Sunday night from Phoenix, home to Boston. And we have been running nonstop ever since. So how's your week been? How's everyone doing? Send me emails and let me know what you're working on. I'd love to know and I'd love to share it with everyone else. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm amassing a pile of these, these squares. Let me do one more, and then I'll check check the email. You can always send me email at lmarquedant at gmail.com. You can always post something right here on Google, on the Simply Colorful Google page, or on YouTube, and or on Facebook. And I will find it. I love it when the seams nest so well. All right. Let's see who's out there on this lovely Friday night. Okay. Oh, we have a text here. I don't even have to log in. From Jean, who says, Hi, Jean. She says, I'm chaperoning the all-night post-prom party. Ah, oh, here in town we do. We have the prom going on. So I may nap through Fibercast tonight. That is understandable. But we'll catch up over the weekend. Good luck, she says. You too, Jean. Good luck to you. I think that's those all-night prom, prom parties are a good thing that we have instituted. Let me go check our email. Wonderful. Well, here's another a, a note from Karen. Hi, Karen. Welcome. She says, many years ago, you gifted me this beautiful collection of coleus fat quarters, as in coleus the plant. I'm cutting, and of course, I don't remember. She says, I'm cutting them up and sewing them back together for fun on a Friday night. Yep, it's what we do. Yes, it is. Let me show everyone. Oh, isn't that neat? Huh. I don't remember that fabric at all, but I love it. I don't know if everyone can see that. See the coleus? And she has matching colors there. Beautiful. I can't get over all you're getting done, Karen. Love it. We, in fact, that modern quilt that you did for Alexa a few weeks ago, 
I would love that pattern. I'd love to do that, and I'd love to share that with people. Um, I think that's a real keeper. Joni, hello, Joni. She says, can't wait. Loved your backdrop last week. We'll be watching you tonight. Oh, good. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you're well. I hope you're working on a project. And thanks again for trying to catch me last week live. I know it must have been frustrating. All right. Oh, and I see one of our neighbors has just sent a note that it looks like her family will be relocating. I just saw that. They've been talking about it for a while. <laughs> I think somewhere out west. So she just sent a note that I was just glancing at when I was checking the, the email and she's looking to do a yard sale and I think that would be a great idea. I have, I certainly have trash that someone else would think is treasure, I hope. <laughs> In fact, the email was cute. It said her husband, she hadn't seen the reload package. Her husband had, and so now she's planning a yard sale. How's that for getting on top of it? Hmm. Well, very good. Chris and Abby, if you're out there, hello. Congratulations on what's going on in your lives. Exciting times. I realized that was kind of a tease to everyone else. And, you know, Chris, if you want to share what you and Abby are doing, please send us an email or a text. Let's see. So these are coming together nicely. I'm really liking, believe it or not, gray. Sewing them together. Did everyone watch Bonnie last night? She was working, making her red and white nine inch patches. Nine inch patches. Three by three. And um, I fell asleep. I bring my iPad to bed. <laughs> so you can see I'm just running this like a leader ender. And yep, we've cut them down and now we're sewing them back together. I was watching the Jeopardy, big, big Jeopardy tournament on TV just before we started up. And uh, the Ken, Ken Jennings was winning again. I think they're, win they're playing for a million dollar prize. He's the one who's won in one of the decades. And man, it was exciting to watch. So what else is up? My socks aren't done yet, but I did make good progress on the one of them. And oh, my hitty bed that we started two weeks ago, it's now painted, and I have antiqued the muslin and the batiste. So the muslin is for the sheets 
and the batiste is for the back of that little miniature quilt. And I really thought my husband was going to fall over when he saw me painting the bed. <laughs> I think maybe that pushed him over the edge that I was getting a little too serious about playing with dollies. <laughs> I assured him I would I would come back to uh, reality and not live in my dolly la la land all the time. I just love those little miniature things. I wonder if anyone out there has gone to is it quilt market that's going on this week up in Pittsburgh? Actually, it just occurs to me, if it is in Pittsburgh, a friend of mine, Bruce, and his wife are heading out to the Frank Lloyd Wright Waterhouse out that area this weekend. I've certainly seen that on pictures a lot. I've never seen it in person. We went out to, um, oh, not Thousand Oaks, but in the outskirts of Chicago out there where Frank Lloyd Wright did a lot of his buildings and where Hemingway's home is. I'm sure many of you have seen that in past years. and I, I actually am a big fan of that style of architecture. I probably would pick that kind of a house to build if I could pick any kind I wanted. But right now, I'm, pa I'm past house building. Right now I'm obsessing over a teardrop camper. I want one. Either a teardrop or a Shasta camper. I don't know if anyone follows the Vintage Camper site on Facebook. Oh, love them. There's a whole group of people that redoes, refurbishes them from the what 50s, 60s, from what I can tell. And oh, they're just so fun in the in the 50s colors of red and green and yellow, bright sunny colors. And now that I'm a hiker, having gone into the Grand Canyon, I want to get. <laughs> a camper and hook it up to the back of our SUV and go find some mountains. Believe me, at times coming back up the canyon, I mean, we weren't crawling, but we were going very, very slowly. And I enjoyed every minute of it. You just knew that you were getting your heart was working, you're, you were getting exercise, the beauty around. Um, I just think I'd like to do more of that. It was almost meditative like quilting is. And if we did get a camper, can you imagine the, the quilt we could make for it and the curtains? Oh my. I'm serious, seriously, someday, some Friday night on Fibercast, I am going to tell you I have found one. I don't think I want to build one from a kit. I played with that idea for a while. I'm just not, I don't have those skills really. And I don't think I want to buy a new one because I'm sure this will be just a fad like everything else. <laughs> If I could find an older one that has just been sitting in someone's side yard and I could put a new fresh coat of paint and pump up the tires, I would do it. How fun that would be. So what are you all dreaming about these days? Are there proms in your areas too? 
Tis the season. Let me do one more and I'll check and see who's out there. You can see we're making good progress. didn't tell you much about the quilt store we stopped in, Quiltique, out in Henderson, outside of Las Vegas. It was very nice. It wasn't huge, but the ceilings were tall, the lighting was great, it was very bright, and all of the product was very new and current. And um, almost every example that they had up on the walls, whether it was a quilt or they had they literally had a stuff, stuffed animals. They had lots of little, not ch bags that have been created, um, pin cushions, lots of different things that you can do with fabric. And they had them all in kit form too. So you'd see this in beautiful brand new fabric and then there was the kit. And it wasn't terribly high, it wasn't a big markup. It was just an easy way to buy the fabric. So I really liked that. And they had a full, full Bernina set up and a nice room where they were teaching a class and the staff couldn't have been more friendly and it was buzzing. I mean, they, mu they must have had, I don't know, eight staff members there, whether they were filling orders in the back because I think they do sell online as well. Um, just really well done. Just a, a hopping place. And and then you saw, prob or maybe you saw when I posted, they also had the reading area for the husbands with field and stream. <laughs> so once again, Bob was incredibly supportive. In fact, to give you another idea of how supportive my husband is, he had to use all of the lights that I know you don't see, but they're shining on me right now. He had to use them earlier this week to shoot his house. Do you see what I'm going to do? I'm, excuse me for one minute. I'm going to stop that story. I don't know if you can see this, but I have two squares that are exactly the same here right here, there, and there. I could just sew it together and have two alike because it is so scrappy that would work fine. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that and then switch these two around. Let me make sure. Oh, that's interesting, but then I'll have another repeat. I'll show you this. So if I cut that off, you see that? And then I turn this. Oh, no, that'll work. I turn that around. I won't have any similar ones matching. Oh, so what was I saying? Oh, supportive husbands. Bob had packed up all of these lights earlier this week to film a house that he's selling. He takes pictures inside and out to post. And there are a lot of lights here and lots of cords and everything. Sure enough, tonight, after all the work he's been doing all week, he came up and set, reset up the lights for me with his band members. They're very good to me. And in fact, we all had a a laugh because one of the band members, Carl, was stand, sitting here pretending to sew so while Bob worked on the lights. He was having fun. <laughs> so
So Joyce, hi if you're out there, both Joyces. Sandra, love to see your autism blankets and the check that you delivered to them. That was impressive. Oh, Carol. Hi, Carol. Carol actually wrote to me a while ago, and she said she also is chaperoning a prom, so she'll be dialing in afterwards. Sandra. Hi. Sandra says she's working on a crocheted baby blanket and enjoying your quilting. So glad you had a good trip. Thank you. Thanks. It's nice to be back, and I nice to hear hear your voice. Oh, good, and Sandra has sent us a picture of the blanket. Ooh, pretty. Ooh, I love the pastel colors. Can, can you see that? Oh, that is pretty pastel. Is it worsted weight, or maybe it's bulky weight? I like how firm it is, too. Beautiful. You do get a lot done. I so want to make, <laughs> what don't I want to make? I want a crochet blanket. Rebecca. Oh, vintage camping and sewing. In fact, Rebecca, you, I believe you gave me the tip on the national parks. And we haven't gone to the one you gave a tip on, but, oh, I can't wait to read this. So Rebecca has written about vintage camping and sewing machines. She says, my husband and I recently purchased a travel trailer. Nothing fancy but vintage. I did buy a vintage sewing machine to go in it, though. Oh, I love it. She isn't fancy, but she does make a nice stitch. I still have to make room in the travel trailer for the machine. There are some pictures over on my blog. Oh, Becca, awesome. I'm going to click on it right now, and we're, we're going to see this. See, what a great thing. You get some exercise, you get out in the wilderness, you get away from your day-to-day -day chores. You, did I say exercise? Get to be with your husband instead of him working. Oh, I think I read this one of yours. So this is part two of the cleaning up of your Singer sewing machine. Let me see if I can get a picture of it. Oh, neat. Love it. Oh, now we're in Maryland at the Sheep and Wool Festival. That looked fun. Sorry, everyone. This is going to be good. Well, okay. I'm going to go back here. Check out her link. It's, it's on Google. It's Becca's Crazy Projects.blogspot.com. And here is no oh I keep I keep wanting to get the picture of the machine bigger and then now interesting, you're gonna put the whole cabinet in your vintage trailer. I'll be interested to hear about that. Beautiful. And so the vintage camper, I'm curious if you had to do a lot of work to it. Oh, and now we're on to socks. So Becca also says you should really try to knit socks two at a time. I do that so I never have second sock syndrome. <laughs> I also know they are exactly the same size. I I hear you. So when you do the sec <clears throat> are you using two circular needles to do the two socks? I assume that's how you're doing it. In the create in this figure eight type thing. You're right, I should do that. I've done two mittens at the same time when they've been open mittens, not on the four needles. I should do that. Thank you. Sheila Burton, welcome. 
Sheila asks me, she's wondering how often I sew per week. You finish your projects so fast, and she says she loves my projects. How nice. In Tennessee, hi. I hope you're not getting too much rain. Hopefully it's come past you in Pennsylvania. It's now raining here. Um, well, it really depends. I have been sewing a lot probably since January. Um, uh, and it just so varies depending on my work schedule. S some weekends I will sew for six, eight hours, and then weekdays, a couple of nights I might sew three or four hours. Um, it's, it is really, I know I say it every week, but it is amazing what you can get done if you just sit and sew. I've taken to listening to podcasts, so I'll pop on Adam Carolla or another podcast. I've not yet gotten into audiobooks, I think I'm going to do that, and I just sew away pretty quickly. I'm not a real perfectionist either, you'll notice. You know, if you look at my seams closely, they don't all line up. So I guess that's that's one way. And I, you know, again, I'm not a perfectionist, and I do, sometimes things don't work out the way I expect them, and I'm more often likely to leave it and accept it than to go redo it. So that might be part of it. I guess, oh, and one more thought on that, though. I definitely try to finish things, although it might seem to you I have a lot of things going on. I do, and I'd like to get that down even further. In fact, I might do some shows on just finishing up UFOs. I think that might be fun over the summer. Do things a little bit more, not sporadically, but just not be so focused on doing a lot of new things. Um, because I know a lot of you are out traveling, camping, gardening. So we'll try and do that. Um, and I'm just going to try and take it easy a little bit. Karen, Karen K as opposed to Karen M. Karen says, so glad you had a great trip. So happy to be watching you on my iPhone. Wow, that's great. We'll rewatch it when I get home from work. Oh, that's right. I remember you do this. Do you have the earbuds? Karen's out on the whisk. West Coast for folks who are out there. I am working on schoolhouse blocks for my guild block of the month that I won last week, all in 30s fabric. Such happy work. That does sound fun. Send us a picture. Excellent. And have a safe trip home, and I'm so glad. Happy Friday. You're probably just, just hitting the, the end of the day whistle. Joni says... I would love to have an old camper trailer. See? Me too. They are so cool looking. Maybe it's the age we are. Good point. I would go every weekend on a road trip. I can't wait for the day you tell us you found one. <laughs> Sorry you didn't get your socks done. I would like to see them when you're done with them. You will. You will. Oh, and Judy, speaking of socks, oh, she says she's trying to knit, but cat is getting in the way. That cat, that is not uncommon. Have you seen the pictures of the cats in the sewing machines trying to get at, at the thread? Oh. Well, say hi to that cat for us, and hi to you. Oh. So nice to hear from everyone. <laughs> Sandra just wrote, I'm laughing as you talk about camping as I used to try to get my first husband to buy a cabin in Heber Springs, Arkansas as we went fishing a lot. He would just look at me and tell me he got all of the camping he wanted in the Marine Corps. <laughs> That's funny. You know, Bob is not into this. He... Any way he can, he will dissuade me, so I can relate to that. That's funny. Oh, I will keep you posted. I look on Craigslist. I look on eBay. I'm 
some weekend, if I'm missing, I'm driving around Vermont and New Hampshire looking for an old camper. <laughs> Of course, a few years ago, I got it in my head that I wanted a pool out back. So I bought myself one of those above ground pools. Bob spent a whole day flattening the earth so that I could put my pool. We probably practically wore out the water pump filling the darn thing. I spent more time taking leaves out of it. I probably, I guess I did swim in it a lot. I floated in it at night. I think we put it up two years, and now it's up in the attic. So if anyone has a camper that they'd like to trade for a pool, let me know. <laughs> and Arkansas must, I think that would be a beautiful place to camp. I went out there years ago when I was walking, working on a project for Walmart, and... I was so surprised at how green Arkansas is. Just, I think people would be surprised to hear that. It was, it was lush, it was lovely. Friendly, very, very, very nice. Now, of course, the dog would present a problem. For those of you who camp, do you take pets with you? And if so, what do you do during the day? Do you take, see, our pet, Allie, is too old, really, to do a long walk. So, I have to figure something out. I certainly can't leave her in the trailer. Did I ever tell you about the time... I'm sure many of you have done this too. You ever seen a dog in a car and actually let the dog out? <laughs> Don't call the police. I didn't let the dog go wild. He had a leash on or there was a leash in the car or maybe I had a leash. So I took the dog, it was in the parking lot, just a next town over. It was a hot day, and that dog should not have been in that car. And he was panting, and he was just... And, of course, the window was open, like that much. But as you know, the temperature in those cars rises so quickly. So I opened up the door, and I took the dog out, and I stood there in front of the car, and I waited for his owner to come out. Oh, it was a man, kind of a young man. He was not very happy, which I'm sure, he was probably embarrassed, so I tried, I didn't say anything, I just said, here's your dog, and probably was lucky that he didn't call the police, and I just took off, <laughs> but I just, I couldn't just leave the dog there, because it would just be awful, certainly anyone, in my opinion, anyone who leaves the dog in the car does not believe, thinks they're just going to run in. They, they have, they don't think it's going to hurt them. You know, you just, you just never know. And how awful would they feel if something did happen to the dog? So, and I know I could make a mistake like that very easily. So, anyway, enough about that. We're cranking here. Check this out. So this one, we only have one more, and they're all going to come together at the same time. Then what I think I'm going to do is do a corner and put two of these on it. That'll be fun to see. 
and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, I'll get my iron going here. Got one done. There we go. how many of you out there are tweeters using Twitter to uh, to tweet to people I think maybe some of you are I've seen you out there I know that Amy Butler usually retweets to about 4,000 people retweets the notice that I send out about Fibercast this morning or midday today. I didn't get it out early enough. But it's kind of a hoop, this whole tweeting thing, because it's um, it's new when people are still figuring it out, including me. I had one of my tweets. So I've had a couple of successes. I'm on a roll this week. That's why I brought this up. I had one of my tweets retweeted to 14,500 people. And it was, that's 140 characters. So isn't that who? And I won an award at work for my tweeting out at EMC World. So I'm feeling pretty good. It's a hoot. Hoot, hoot, hoot. As in hoot sweet. Okay, so. I have two of these that I am going to put on either side of this. This is a corner square. And I'm going to put one of these in the corner. So first, though, I'm going to iron my two squares. I think, Becca, you mentioned Glacier National Park as a park to go to. And that's, if I'm remembering right, I think my parents, I know my parents went there, and I'd like to do that. So that's on the list. Just wanted you to know. There's one. That's going to go on one side. So I don't know if you can see this well. Let me clear all of this junk away. So what I'm going to do is, well, maybe I'll do it this way. Put that in the corner. <laughs> Speaking of getting things done, Sandra gets a lot done. I think we'd be curious in your methods for how you get things done. I know I would like, I have a local quilt guild, as many of you know, the Marathon Quilters. And we get together once a month for programs, or we have visitors, or when I'm not working, I can get there. But it's not like a hands-on. Sometimes we'll do a workshop. That's a good way to get things done. If you have a few girlfriends or friends that you want to get together with on a Saturday or Sunday. Okay, 
So I don't know if you can see that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this to this. That's one corner. And I'm going to sew this to this. And do that. Oh, how are people's gardens coming? I did go up, I walked up last night to our community garden. Bridget, if you're out there, great job. Bridget is a neighbor that, that I'm doing the garden with. And we have we have lettuce up. We have kale. Um, the raspberries that, that she replanted are doing great. Lot throwing lots of leaves out. She cut them down to like that and transplanted them very early this spring. So we're hoping that works. And her rhubarb is coming up and some herbs from last year are reappearing. I planted some zinnias last night when I walked up there. I love having flowers in the garden that you can pick. You know, come midsummer. Okay. Right? So again, I'm using the these as leader enders almost. So now I have one corner. And then I'm going to sew this to the other side of it. Hmm. I might go over there. Yep. Okay. For something this long, I usually do put a couple of stay pins. Just because I find I do tend to stretch fabric. Although this is pretty good because it was cut on the Aki quilt, so it's not like they're really far off. As long as your seams uh, line up, you can ease in if your squares aren't quite lining up. Don't you find fabric is pretty forgiving compared to some other medium? I I like how you can play with it.
Okay. All right. So let me iron this. We'll see. We'll check one more time for who's out there. And and then collectively we'll look at what we got accomplished tonight. So I I iron the seam flat first. And then okay. Okay, almost ready. Okay. So there is a corner of the quilt. I don't know if you can see that. That will be fun. So with that, I think we're about done with another fiber cast. Let me just check to see who's out there and make sure I haven't missed any good pictures. Seems like inevitably I'll go check pictures after I'm done and I see one that someone that I've missed. So I apologize if I have missed anyone. Oh, remember the yard sale I mentioned. So another another neighbor wrote, Bridget, the one who I do gardening with, um, she says her husband told her he doesn't have anything to sell. <laughs> and she says, I know Lynn will understand the hilarity and amusement of this comment. I do. <laughs> Our husbands like to gather things. But of course he is excited to buy all of our stuff. That's funny. Well, I'll make sure that Bob buys all of his stuff. <laughs> oh, funny. So that stay tuned. We'll let you know about the yard sale. Um, and with that, let me make sure I haven't missed anyone. Thank you again for all of your comments. Um, there was one in here. Oh, Rita, Rita Pacheco said she loved the Grand Canyon fiber cast. Don't know if you're out there. And Rita Smith, hope you're out there. Nice to see you. Karen asks about the lizard. No, it didn't scare me. And again, please don't worry, I wasn't that close to the edge. And let's see, I did want to look. Karen, good luck with your coleus fabric. <laughs> Sheila, thank you again. Um, send pictures of what you're working on. And if others on the line have tricks for getting things done or how you go about your projects, let us know. Share. I guess the other thing, Sheila, just is that I am pretty fortunate in that I don't have children or a lot of other things that can that take me away from my sewing. So I'm pretty, I'm spoiled in that respect. Um, and I have a very supportive husband, as you know. Okay, let me check one more place and then I promise I'll sign off. But it just feels like it's been forever since I've seen you all. I'm going to Facebook. So my plan this weekend is to do a lot of gardening outside, but I also will get this quilt together and I will get the green applique on. I might do a fast applique, like uh, turn it under and then 
iron it down, and I'll go from there. Oh, and I also hope to make progress on the hitty bed. Oh, and I have a christening to go to. Hmm, tomorrow. Actually, it's not a christening. It's a first communion. <laughs> and, and, of course, I'll be looking for a camper. Okay. Oh, post by others. Computer use 101. Just want to make sure I don't miss you. Hi to Kelsey again. If if uh, I didn't say that, I saw all of the vintage quilters went into the Museum of Fine Arts to see the Quilt Museum, the Pilgrim Roy collection, and uh, that looks great. I'm actually I just made a date to go in there. I was going to go in this weekend, but I'm going to go in on June 11th with a friend from work. So I'm looking forward to that. Margaret Stevens, hello, welcome, and I think that's it. So it's been another wonderful Friday night of Fibercast. I hope you got a lot done. It's amazing what we can get done in 60 minutes, isn't it? Send me texts, send me posts, show us pictures of what you're working on, just share the love of quilting and fiber arts, and we will see you next week, 8 p.m. Eastern, on another Fibercast. Bye, everyone.